Welcome everybody. This is the Microsoft 365 Platform Community Call. It is February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day uh, for those who are celebrating. And uh, depending on a region of the world, it means a thing or it doesn't mean a thing. Um, in, in Finland, actually, that's a friendship day more than a kind of a heart for the day. So in a, in a good way, still uh, taking care of other people as well. Now, today, We'll start with the latest updates and news from Microsoft 365 platform all up. What's happening, not just only developer side, but also in other areas as well. We'll talk about, a bit about the new name of Yammer and all of that stuff. Not too much, but, but it's good to be aware of those. Uh, so what is the latest news in the Microsoft blogs? We'll take a group photo and for those who are willing to enable the video. Uh, we'll take a brief GIF animation on that and share that in LinkedIn and Twitter. And then we'll go to the actual stars of today who are Dan Valin and Sebastian Lever. I'm going to talk about Azure Communication Services, and this is a eight spots long series where we're going to cover all of the basics in Azure Communication Services, which enables you to take advantage of the Microsoft Teams technology within your custom application. So you can basically think about websites or mobile, mobile experiences from where your customers can connect towards your customer representatives or let's say a doctors who are using Microsoft Teams. So it's a really, really cool technology uh, which is available to take advantage. And the second demo today uh, is from Sebastian Lebert and, and she, he's going to talk about what's next for the Microsoft Craft Toolkit. And Craft Toolkit is the one which makes a development of Microsoft Craft APIs based functionality is super, super easy. So you can just track and drop a control to your solution and it magically works. Um, and Seb is going to talk about what is the magic behind of the scene. Now, before we go there, uh, let's recap some of the assets which we have available uh, to you to get started. So first of all, uh, we do have our Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community video channels where we release new videos every single day. Uh, so there's new videos related to Microsoft 365 extensibility and Power Platform extensibility in that one centralized channel. All of the demos, community call recordings, all of that stuff is getting published on that channel in every single day. We have a lot of open source assets available in multiple different locations, but as it might be a dip bit difficult to finding the relevant one sample for your exact business use case, we do have sample galleries which are making it easier to find the relevant sample for you. So you can actually go to the AKMS community samples and then use the simple search text box based uh, search engine to find a relevant sample for you. So you don't have to start from scratch, which makes your life easier. And if you were wondering that there's too many URLs to remember, luckily there's only one, which we bit adjusted. Uh, of course, the previous versions of this URL do work uh, still and will work in the future, uh, but we're trying to align on this community uh, uh, URL scheme. So AKMS forward slash community forward slash home is the, is the location for that, and that will be redirected to the right location. Now, we do have quite a lot of Microsoft 365 uh, developer community calls and Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community calls happening every single week as well. So we do have this weekly Microsoft 365 platform call, which happens every single Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we have presenters who are always Microsoft uh, employees in this call. And then we have multiple other calls where we have a mixture of Microsoft uh, presenters and also community presenters. So we have the Power Platform community call, which is happening this week, the Microsoft Identity Platform community call, which happens this week as well. So it's a really busy week, Office Add-in monthly call. And then we have our Thursday series, which is either Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community or the Viva Connection and SharePoint community call happening every single Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific time. In the 7 a.m. Pacific time Thursdays, that's more community presenters. But occasionally, there might be Microsoft presenters there as well. You can download all of the invites for this, the recurrent invites for these calls from AKMS uh, forward slash community forward slash calls. So making it super easy for you to pick which are the calls where you want to actually participate. Of course, all of the calls are getting recorded and they're getting published in the YouTube channel. So you don't have to participate in all of the calls. It's reminded me that we also have our meetup uh, location where you can always advance, go and double check uh, what is the agenda of the call. So you don't have to wait until the call starts to know what are we coming through. Calls in this week is going to be really busy, like uh, David is uh, joking on the chat. Now, uh, we do give you a lot of opportunities to participate in the community, uh, and we would welcome you to do demos and technical demos on solution or technical patterns within this calls. So please, please sign up on these. These are great opportunities to get visibility for you or if your company and both. Of course, we don't want these to be product demos because that's a separate uh, storyline, but they don't have to be based on open source as well. So if you build something which has a learnings, so you publish something in the store, you build something cool scenarios with AI, you build something else, just tell us the story. Well, how did you learn? What was the learning from technology perspective? Um, and again, not selling the product, 
but doing those uh, storylines and sample solutions and of course open source solutions are more than welcome to demo here as well. Now you can also contribute in GitHub and most importantly please provide us feedback in the multiple different channels which we have available and if nothing else something is bothering you add a comment in the chat right now during the, this community call so we will know your bad feedback is it good or bad that's always welcome. We have a lot of assets, getting started assets available for you to get started in Microsoft 365 development. Uh, you can get a free Microsoft 365 developer uh, tenant uh, by subscribing to the Microsoft 365 developer program and that tenant will automatically renew in 90 days. Super, super cool uh, benefit from there. And we do have a lot of, lot of new learning modules every single month available from the Microsoft Learn, uh, focusing on showcasing the art of possible in Microsoft 365. So absolutely welcome or recommend using those modules as well. They are completely free as well. We do have also our Microsoft 365 developer podcast um, and also our Microsoft 365 BMP weekly. Both are basically weekly podcasts or v blogs, video blogs uh, where we culture what's happening within the community and there's always visitors in place when we talk about the latest what's happening. So for example in the BMP weekly and uh, the last week we talked about uh, the impact of AI for developers. So will the, will the AI take over the developer jobs and let me spill the beans and answer it, of course, no, but it will be, get really interesting in the future uh, what the AI can do and help us to be more productive in the development jobs. We do have our Microsoft 365 sample gallery, um, which has now 1485 samples. We're closing that magical 1500 samples in that one location from where you can easily find relevant samples for you across the Power Platform, uh, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Craft, Craft Toolkit, uh, SharePoint Framework, and so on. So there's a lot of, lot of awesome stuff to be available to you to take advantage. So please use that to find the relevant sample for you. Now, as you find the sample, you might feel like, okay, now I'm in a GitHub and I'm not sure what I'm going to do in here. So there's some sort of a forking thing and how would I now get started? We actually got you covered on the all of the getting started uh, scenarios and that's our Sharing is Caring initiative, which David Warner is going to do a quick intro. Yes, and if you're hungry for GitHub, as Vesa mentioned, you want to fork your GitHub, right? We're going to give you a knife and spoon too, everybody. Joking aside, we are here to provide you hands-on guidance in the community. That means that we are going to join live sessions, working together to show you how to do things like submitting to GitHub, navigating GitHub, submitting and uh, getting better at writing for the web or using some of the samples. You saw we're almost at 1,500 samples. Are you gonna get us to 1,500? We hope so, and we wanna help you do that. So these sessions are safe space, not recorded. Ask any and all questions, collaborate with everyone in the community. It's a great opportunity. We've got the Power Platform Samples Contributor coming up next week, so don't hesitate to get signed up for that. Uh, and we've got even more coming up getting scheduled as well for March. So we look forward to working with anybody. If there's a specific topic that you want that we haven't already scheduled, let us know. It's okay. We'd love to schedule it for you. Thank you. Vesa, back to you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Los Angeles, uh, for the update of the day. Now, let's continue from Helsinki. Now, a few things what we also want to promote uh, in these weekly calls. So I'm going to have this one as a recurrent thing here is our community events and also events where Microsoft is involved. So first of all, on the left side, you will in the future start seeing all of the awesome uh, events, what the community is actually providing. All of these are also listed at the www.communitydays.org URL, which is a great centralized location to understand what's happening. And notice this is just to event from mid-February until end of March. So every single day almost there's something happening across the world uh, within our awesome community. So a lot of, lot of opportunities for you to join. Notice that some of these events, most of these events are actually free. So you can simply uh, register to attend them. Um, also these events, they are always looking for speakers and maybe not these events because they're happening within a week or two, but the future events are looking for speakers and some of them might have a cost associated to them. So double check the insights uh, around those events um, as you based on the events which are interested in participating. On the right side, uh, we have a list of all of the larger events where we have a direct Microsoft involvement. Uh, so basically we'll have a crew running the uh, Microsoft 365 conference in Las Vegas on May 1st to 5th. Um, and just as yesterday, actually Jeff Deeper um, uh, recorded a or published a video with video invite for everybody to come to that event. And that's a really great event where we actually cover Microsoft 365 and Power Platform all up as a better together story. So really, really cool scenarios and awesome announcements in the in the queue on that one. And then that's followed by a European Collaboration Summit in May 22 and a lot of, lot of other events and a few uh, later this year. 
Now, the latest news uh, on the developer blog, uh, there was new two new blog posts uh, related on Microsoft 365 development, the write simpler code with the new Microsoft Craft.NET SDK v5, which is now in preview. Maisa is the PM of this feature uh, functionality, so the SDKs, and she wrote about the updated updates and what's coming and what are the improvements there. And then there's the From Zero to Hero, build a meeting app with Azure Communication Services and Microsoft Teams part two, and that's done while in Aisha Bass, talking about that scenario and some of these things we're going to actually see today within Dan's demo, so I'm not going to go too detailed what that blog post uh, contains. On the Viva blog, we had two different uh, announcements, so new leadership analytics knowledge experiences for Viva and Cage, and this is basically an announcement where the Yammer will be renamed as Viva and Cage, and also the improvements in the Viva and Cage uh, side. So Yammer is now part of the Viva uh, Viva suit, so to say, product suit, uh, and it uh, has constant improvements. And then the right side on the Viva side, new experiences for Viva Connection are now rolling out. It's an update related on the Viva Home, which is a free uh, functionality, which is rolling out worldwide to targeted release tenants right now. If you don't like it right now to come to your tenant and you're in targeted release uh, mode, you can actually fall back uh, with a PowerShell scripts, and all of that is being explained in that blog post. On the lower right, uh, there's two blog, uh, two new uh, episodes in the intro zone, one being templates and one being on the Vivine cage. And then there's an awesome blog post related on at building corporate communicational intranets and the branding features, which we have in the Microsoft 365 by Kathy Du. Really, really great uh, blog post as well. Now, before we go to the actual demos of today and the stars of today, let's do a quick uh, group photo uh, for those who are willing to enable the camera for them. Let's see if I can actually get uh, this to work a bit better this time. I think I last time shared some of my screens, which I should not have as shared, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, but let me go here and to, to get a mode. Auditorium mode. Uh, we still have few seats in the room, a bit pixelated still, uh, getting better, getting better, getting better, getting better. I guess we are maxing out. Let me put the recording on. Oh, there's one more road coming in. Let's do some hand waving. Let's grab a quick animation done. Thank you everybody for joining. Awesome. And Seb is showing an example in the middle. Really, really cool. Excellent. We'll grab a GIF animation out of that. Thank you for that. So let me click that one and take that away from here. Awesome. Thank you once again on that one. Really, really cool to see the faces. Um, and hopefully we'll see meet you meet in the in-person in conferences uh, later this year. Now let's go to the actual stars of the day. We'll have Dan Walling to talk about Azure Communication Services and then Sebastian Levers talk about what's next for the Microsoft Craft Toolkit. But Dan, let's jump on your screen and move forward from there. All right. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be back, folks. We're going to talk more about Microsoft Cloud and Azure Communication Services. And this is a series, as uh, Vesa just mentioned, that uh, we started last week. So even if you can't catch all these, there's going to be eight total, I think, sessions, which I'll go through momentarily. Uh, you'll still be able to get to the recordings. And, you know, they're only, what, each demo is like 15, 10, 15 minutes. So it's a great way to quickly learn about things you could do that you might not have jumped into before. And I think there's a ton of applicability in many scenarios to what we're gonna talk about here. So uh, my name is Dan Walleen, I'm with the Cloud Advocacy Group. And what we're gonna be talking about throughout this series, uh, I've been working with my colleague, Aicha Bush, who she will be joining us, I'll be here next week, and then week after that, she'll join. And uh, she'll be doing a couple sessions as well. So as mentioned, this is kind of a, a multi-part series. Um, we started off by talking about audio and video calling from a custom app into a Teams meeting and just really ran a demo. I'm going to show you that again, so if you missed it, no worries. But today we're going to focus more on the ACS side and how we can actually use that to get started. And so if you haven't heard of ACS, Azure Communication Services, this is literally using the same infrastructure that we're using right now with Teams. Um, and so we'll talk about how you can actually embed this type of functionality into your own apps and some of the scenarios um, that you can do with that. Now, just as a quick review of what's coming, um, so I'll be here next week as well, for good or for bad again. Um, but I'm going to talk next week about, you know, we this week we're going to focus on how do you get started with it. Next week, we'll actually switch to an app. It's going to be a React app, but these are web components that we're going to be talking about later. And you could use them anywhere the web runs. Um, so we'll talk about that. 
Aicha will join us to talk about Azure uh, Functions and how we can dynamically use Microsoft Graph there to set up a meeting for this type of scenario. Uh, she'll also talk about Azure Functions and uh, getting tokens to ACS because uh, there is some user identity uh, and a token you need, and you're going to see that today, actually. And then I'll be back to wrap up on uh, some deployment options to Azure. So the nice thing with this series is while we're going to have some Microsoft 365, we're going to have some Azure, um, we're going to put it all together, though. And uh, I'll give you a link at the end of the session on a tutorial that you can go through that's hands on. And so it's a great way to learn if you're interested. All right, so in part two today, I'm really going to mostly jump into the Azure portal. And then I'm going to show you something called UI components and uh, a nice little web page we have set up where you can actually try out what I'm going to demo today without any code, actually. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. All right, so this is actually what we're going to look at building. Um, so this app allows a customer to actually make a face-to-face -face call, audio video call with a uh, customer service or some other scenario. Uh, last time I joked that I had an AC guy over and he needed to call back to headquarters and this would work. So what will happen is you could have like a customer service rep who could join a call. We're going to do that here. This is Aicha. And Aicha now joined and then it'll go back to me. She's going to admit me into the lobby. Notice uh, she was in Teams, by the way, or she is in Teams right here. And then I am just in a regular custom app. In fact, that's what I would see from the customer viewpoint. So very much like what we're doing right now, again, with Teams, but you can actually do this yourself in any custom app that runs the web. So the general building blocks of this are the following. Um, you'll notice that we have uh, React there in the middle. And again, it could be any front end app. It could be uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, whatever you wanna do. But we have Azure Communication Services, and we're going to talk about that part today. It calls into Azure Functions to integrate with setting up meetings, and there's a couple ways you can actually do that that we'll talk about later. And then, of course, we're calling into Teams. Now, with ACS, you don't have to call into Teams. You could actually have an app call another app. So if um, you know Michelle was in the custom app and I'm in the custom app, we could actually talk one-to-one, -one, or you can even do one-to-many. Very uh, neat type of setup. So that's kind of where we're at. And then today I'm gonna then focus right in here. Let me go to the next slide here, right there to the Azure Communication Services side and that'll get us to what we're gonna do. So with that, let me show you how you would get started with this. So on the left, you'll see I have uh, the Azure portal. No surprises there. And then on the right, uh, I have my Microsoft 365 developer tenant going. And I'm just logged in as a fake, a fake me, actually, up here. You'll see apparently I'm available even though I'm presenting because it's in a different tenant. But what I'm gonna do is show you like how would you get started with this and how could you actually try it with zero code on your part? Um, and what I'll show you at the end of this is I think it's pretty compelling, pretty neat to work with. And I'll show you some other things you can do outside of just audio video calling. Um, so let's jump on in. So the first thing is you would need to create an Azure Communication Services resource. All right, now I've done it enough that it just shows up, but obviously we can come on up, type communication, and then communication services shows up. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have one. I'm going to create one from scratch. If it takes too long to set up, I'll just use this one for the demo, but we're going to try to do it from scratch here and see how it goes. Now, let me switch real quick to a different resource group kind of my bucket where I want to put this if you're new to it. And I'm going to give it a name of, let's just call it ACS M365 call. Now, data location, this is, uh, you can actually get information about the calls and other features of ACS that are made. And so data location isn't so much about like where the calls are going to be made so much as where is the data from that uh, going to be made. So if you want to get like metrics information, where do you want that stored? Um, so I'm just going to leave where I am and let's go ahead and that all looks pretty good. So let's review and create. It should validate here in just a moment. And then once it validates and there we go, it should create. And normally it takes, I don't know, 45 seconds, maybe something like that. It, it depends on the day. 
but we'll let it we'll let it uh, do its thing. Now, while this is setting up, I want to show you how you can get started with this. So you'll notice on this page, I'm just in our normal learn.microsoft.com. And if you just go search for Azure Communication Services, uh, it's really easy to find. And then we have some common scenarios in here. We have samples, those type of things. In fact, there's a video um, on how to get started from a really high level overview, even higher than I'm gonna go today. But what I wanna mention while this is kind of uh, creating the resource over here is that while we're gonna focus on voice and video calling, you can set up chat. In fact, you could even have voice and video calling with chat, just like Teams chat, by the way. Uh, you could send SMS text messages, or you could send uh, email. So pretty much any communication functionality you could do once you set up this resource I'm now setting up in the Azure portal. In fact, uh, it's not mentioned right here quite as much, but you'll notice down here, you can actually acquire phone numbers, and not only can you do SMS uh, texting, but you can even make phone-to-phone -phone type calls. So I could have an app that actually calls someone's phone. You could do telephony with this. So a lot of really cool scenarios here that in the past would have been super hard to do. Now, the thing I wanted to point out, though, is if we come on down, you're going to notice a link here to UI Library. I mentioned earlier that once you get this set up, you can actually get started with zero code. Of course, some of you are going, I mean, come on, Dan, what's the fun in that? We got to have code. And we will. Next week, we'll get into that. But, you know, sometimes you just want to try something out before you invest all that time to start your app. Well, this UI library will let you do that. And that's what we're going to use here in just a moment. I already have it open. But this is a, if you've heard of a storybook, I love storybook, by the way. Um, it's a way to do things like UI testing scenarios, but you can also use it uh, for just demoing components. And you'll notice here on the left, we have these things called composites. Now, a composite is really just like, it, it's kind of like a Lego set with a bunch of Legos that have already been put together for you. They've been composed, if you will, into a web component that you can just kind of drop into your app and you get all this functionality. So if you think about making a call, like look at this screenshot right here, you know, you have the video stream, you have the ability to pick the camera, you have the toolbar to hang up and, you know, enable camera and all that stuff we're used to in Teams, for example. Uh, you could have chat up here, you'll notice some of that. Uh, you might have the people in the call. So anyway, there's a lot of, you know, pieces and all of those are down here in the UI components. But sometimes you're just like, I just want to make a call. I don't want to worry about putting all the pieces together. Just give me a Lego set that I can just drop in my app and I can just use it. Well, that's what we're going to learn about today. In fact, we're going to go into this one called the call composite. And we're going to do the join existing call because I'm going to try to join into a Teams call, just like you saw in the, the video demo there. All right. So let's see where we're at. Looks like it's complete. That is good news. Uh, this thing is totally overtaking my screen, but let's go to resource because I'm kind of zoomed in here. All right. So this is my ACS resource. That's how easy it is to uh, set up. Now, if I want to demo this, though, back here, my goal is I want to go to this join existing call preview. But notice that it, it requires some properties down here. We need a user identifier for the person making the call. We need a token, uh, display name. Now, that one I'll change to me. And then in this case, because I'm going to call into Teams, we need a way to do the Teams meeting link. Now, you'll notice there's some other options. You can even call into a room that already has a, a meeting set up. And you can call into a group with ACS. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do. We're going to do this one the Teams meeting link. So what I'm going to do is come on over to Teams here, and I'm just going to set up a really quick call. We'll call it test call because I'm so creative um, for, you know, today. Let's go ahead and save that. It's really all we need to do. And then if we click on it, we know that we can come on in and, uh, oh, I must not have done, uh, well, actually, that's interesting. Let me edit this because it apparently did not set up. Let me try that again. It did not set up my uh, T 
teams for some reason. Interesting. Let's try that again. Might just have to join it and then get it from there. Um, okay. It might be because I'm so used to doing the dog food version that I'm, I switched uh, last night to this version. So let me make sure I'm not missing something here that I'm not used to seeing. I think we're good. All right, let's let's try that again. And okay, I think it's just because let me move it up. I think it's just because of the time. It's not, I still have like five minutes until that. All right, let's try that. I think that's probably what it is. So let's do test call. Keep capitalizing that. Let's save it. And yeah, interesting. It is not letting me do it right now. Okay, well, I, I might have to do it a different way, like do a new meeting. I'll still be able to show you, so that's okay. Yeah, normally I'm used to you click on it, and you can get the link right here, and I don't know why it's not letting me uh, do that right now. So that's okay, though. What we're going to do is I want to call into a meeting. I might just do a new meeting on my own and grab the link since I'm apparently failing at this approach. Um, but what I want to do is I need an access token and a user ID. We already have the display name. So here's what you can do in ACS. If I come on over, you're going to notice first off, there's keys. We don't need it for this demo. But once you get to the application part, you would need the uh, connection string here. OK, so I just want to point that out. We're not going to use that today, but we would use it later um, in a more realistic scenario. Now, coming on down to here, notice I have identities and user tokens, and this is a great feature. Because instead of me having to go build an app, somehow call into ACS to get a token, get a user identity so that this can work, I can actually just do this. I could say, hey, I'm going to do voice and video calling. Please generate a short-term token and user identity. And then if I want to do chat, we could do that too. I'm not going to do chat today, but we could do that. So I'm going to hit generate. And what this gives me is a user identity and a token. So let me go ahead and copy these real quick. We're going to come on back. And here's the user identity. Here's the user token. And by the way, notice these expire. Um, you basically get 24 hours. So you can use these temporarily, but then they're going to expire. All right, there's the token. Now, the last thing I need is the call locator. All right, notice this hasn't lit up yet. I don't have a, a UI at this point. Now, again, for some reason, this one's not cooperating for me. So, all right, let me try just new meeting here. Um, and let's do a meet now. Let's do uh, get link to share. Start meeting. I'm gonna do allow, but I'm gonna turn off. Uh... All right, let's. Make sure to turn off my mic because I'll get a feedback loop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and paste in that Teams meeting link over here. That's kind of what I was trying to do with the calendar. And notice what happens. This now lights up. Pretty cool. Now, I'm this is the camera I'm on right now. So let me switch to maybe this camera, which is over here. And let me turn this on. And in just a sec, there we go. So you saw me do something like this last week for those that were here, but now we're just doing it again. It's like, look, mom, no code. Pretty awesome. So I'm not going to turn on my mic because that could cause weird things, but I'll leave this camera on and we'll pretend I'm talking this way. You, get, you all get the idea. And now we can come on in and start the call from here. What should happen is I should get a little... Uh, Admit into, uh, oh, I got to join. Hold on. Let's join. And we should get admit to lobby. There we go. In fact, I could copy the media link that way, of course, but let's admit. And we should be in now. All right. And there we go. So now you can see me. I'm now in. And I wrote no code to do this because I'm just able to use these web components in this UI library uh, kind of setup. Pretty cool. Now, there's a couple of things I want to show you here, though, before we uh, wrap up. So let me leave this. We'll leave this one. All right. So over here on the left, you'll notice that in addition to what I just did, if I go to basic example and preview, we could do the same thing, but we could actually do it from like an ACS to ACS. In other words, I don't have to have teams in the mix. Or if I want a one-to-many type, 
There's an example of how we could do that. If you have one too many people, like a webinar type uh, setup, pretty neat. And then I'll just show you a couple of the other things you can do. You can even do chat. Here's an example of kind of what it looks like. It's very Teams looking, actually. And what this will allow us to do is we could actually set up a call and a chat, or you could just have chat. In fact, you'll notice right up top here, there's a call with chat composite. And here, now you're going, whoa, that really looks like Teams, right? Because you have the calling, you have the people, and then you have the chat. And you don't have to write all that. You just have to get the, well, I'll go to the preview here. You just have to get the user identifier, the token, and then there is an endpoint you'd have to get, which, by the way, I can go back to keys, and we can get that from right here. Here's the endpoint right there. So if you want to play around with this, that's all you'd have to do is just go to the Azure portal. Um, even if you don't have a subscription currently, just go get the trial one. And you can now set up an ACS resource, very quick to do it. And then from there, for most of these demos, you would just go to the user tokens. If you want to do the chat, you would, of course, check chat. And you could check both, by the way. Uh, generate those and then just copy and paste those into the UI. So to wrap up here, uh, that's kind of the, the main demo I wanted to show for today. So next week, what I'm going to be doing is saying, okay, that's nice, but you know that's not in my app, Dan. So next week, we're going to take a look at what we can do with uh, React in this case. And again, it could be anything that runs JavaScript. And I'll show you how we can plug in this exact same type of functionality, but into a custom React app. That's what we'll go into. So in the meantime, to wrap up here, if you're interested in not only learning about this scenario, but others, um, we have some resources. I'll, as soon as I'm done, I'll copy this into the chat for you. But you can go to this AKMS link. But the tutorial that I just went through, including setting up the resource, can be found in the second link here. Um, and then you can get to the code in this repo. Now, the uh, Azure Communication Services UI library, there's also a shortcut link for you there. And like I said, I'll, I'll paste these in momentarily. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to get to our next demo here. But I hope that gives everybody a pretty good idea about what you can do with zero code. And then come on back next week, and we'll talk about how you can actually start getting uh, get started with the code. So thank you. We'll see you next week. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. So does the zero code mean no code in this case? Just to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> really, really cool. I, I, by the way, I have to say all credits for the ACS uh, team, so the, the Azure communication team, as they provided those controls. So, of course, behind of the scenes, they're using Microsoft Graph APIs and all of that thing. But having those controls abstracting the API surface makes life super easy for developers. Which is a great segue uh, to our next presenter and a demo uh, because Microsoft Craft Toolkit does exactly that. And Zip is here to talk about the latest in uh, Microsoft uh, Craft Toolkit and what's happening there. Cool. Well, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about the latest on the Microsoft Craft Toolkit. I'm joined today by Gavin, our principal software engineer, dev lead on the Microsoft Craft Toolkit. Um, side and he's going to do some pretty awesome demos so can't wait for that let's move on so if you don't know what the microsoft graph toolkit is the toolkit is a collection of reusable framework agnostic components and off providers that allows you to access and work with the microsoft graph think about dropping components for any web apps that are um, client side so you want to have a people picker? We have a people picker. Don't have to build all that functionality for yourself. We have it. We handle graph. We handle authentication. We handle throttling. We handle everything so you don't have to think about it and just build value for your organization. The components are fully functional, so they're not dummy components. They are fully uh, working, connected to graph, have all the capabilities in there, but they are fully customizable also, so they allow you to change how they behave, how they look, um, and they work with any web framework. So if you're working with React, if you're working with Angular, if you're working with Vue, with Svelte, with any new framework out there, anything, they work with them. And they also work on all modern browsers, and they also work um, as desktop apps when using Electron. 
you would be using the graph toolkit to cut on dev time because that way you don't have to rebuild again and again and again all of these components. How many times have you built a person component connected to graph and bring the picture and bring the presence of that user? How many graph calls does that represent? Well, in the case of the graph toolkit, it represents for you zero calls because we handle all of them. They're beautiful, but they're flexible. Our components are built to look like M365. And you're going to see in this um, session that they even look they look even more like M365 in our future version, but they're fully customizable. So if you want to change, you want to make them look like your own brand, you can do it. And they work everywhere. Um, so that's why you want to use the Graph Toolkit. So let's move on directly to our what's new for V3. Let's dive in and let's talk about what we're going to get with the version three of the Graph Toolkit. First of all, we're going to get a fully refreshed set of components. So all of our components are currently being built with Fluent UI in mind. For a very long time, we have been pretending to be uh, M365 uh, components uh, because there were no alternatives to um, the technology that we're using. We're using web components. There were no libraries built for Fluent UI in that case. And now we have the opportunity to use our Fluent UI web, web components library that the Fluent team is building. And now we have rebuilt a vast majority of the controls and our components using Fluent UI. So that means that you're going to get really, really cool dark mode capabilities. You're going to also going to get automatic detection uh, with some of the functionality we're going to build with Teams, for example, to automatically swap to a dark mode when you're using the dark mode of Teams and light mode and all of that. We're also bringing in two new components, one which is a refreshed version of our login component which now allows for multiple account support. That means that you will be able to swap from one account to the other the same way you can do it today in the M365 portals. Big, big, big productivity gain right here. The second thing that we're bringing is a generic picker control. That generic picker control will allow you to pick any entity from any graph endpoint. So if you want to have a an email selector, you're going to be able to build it. If you want to have a task list selector, you're going to be able to use it. If you want to have a site selector, you're going to be able to use it also. So anything you want to connect to for, from a selection standpoint that will also look very fluent to you, we're going to be able to do that straight from our new generic bigger control. For all of you fans of SPFX and building solutions as web parts in SharePoint, you will be able now to build capabilities that will not impact other providers of web part components that are also using MGT. We had some um, uh, issues in the past with the way that we build components, the way that um, SharePoint Framework registered these components. Now we have a built-in disambiguation, meaning that every single providers will get their own instance of um, the graph toolkit and their own instance of the components that they have. That way, they will not have any collision with other components. It's a very, very, very niche feature that will save a lot of time for a lot of um, you that are building SPFX solutions. We're now going to support the graph JavaScript SDK v3 with um, a vision on our site to support also our v4 in the future, not for now, but for later. We're going to also bring support for our sovereign cloud. So you will be able to use the Graph Toolkit natively in any of the um, community uh, tenants, community cloud, if you're doing also um, on the DoD one and in um, the cloud in China. So any sovereign clouds will now be fully supported um, thanks to the toolkit. And finally, uh, we bumped up our support for Node. Right now, we support 14 and 16, and we expect to support 18 as soon as the SharePoint framework also supports it. So we're going to match our, our support matrix for Node with the SharePoint framework. So that's what is coming up in V3. So let me do something quickly. Let me see if I can actually do that. Um, let me go to mgt.dev slash next slash V3, which is 
something you can already try out. That's our latest um, future branch that we have right here. Let me add it to the chat right here. So a couple of cool things now, for example, we have our MGT login now that has multiple account support. So you can go here and see that now Megan and Emily Brown are logged in and you can swap from one to the other. It's gonna reload the entire UI based on that identity. We'll use their token, their cash also, something that we wanted to make sure that we support is uh, per user cash. So make sure that, well, weird data issues happen in the future. So really, really cool component that we have right there. We also have an MGT picker, and our picker here allows, for example, in this case, to select a list of tasks. In this case, not exactly exciting because we only have one task list, right? Um, in this sandbox tenant, you can task and you 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 can react to selection, react to um, get the entire object that was selected to play with some of that stuff there. But let me show you something, maybe a little bit more. Let's see users. Yeah, yeah let's go with users. Uh, and now you can do uh, this thing. So now I can actually select any user. So me, I'm going to select Ben Walters, and I could actually here say, "Hey, I want to sort it that way. I want to filter. I want to do all of these kind of things." Right there. So that's a really powerful capability that allows you to basically build the app you need. So we're empowering developers in that uh, situation. A couple of other things that I think are really, really, really interesting is our person card. Our person card brings a revamp capability. Uh, very interesting. Um, looks super, super, super slick. All built with Fluent UI right in here and here with all of our different components, with our uh, org chart component and our files and some uh, about us. But something that we're bringing also as a new capability to the person card is when I go to another uh, card here where I can set the user, I'm logged in as Megan Bowen, but now, uh, oh no, it's not there yet. It's, <laughs> it's gonna come in, in, our next, uh, in our next PR, we need to merge it, but we now have the ability to send a message directly from here using graphs. So you have the same ability that we have in Teams to actually send a quick message right from here. So that's actually really, really, really cool uh, that we have that capability now. And you're gonna see a lot of the capabilities have been uh, updated. If we look at our Teams channel picker, it looks totally different. This one was not merged yet. So you're gonna see that this branch is really, really, really uh, moving a lot because we're working really, really hard on the future of this. So let me um, give you a, a glimpse to the file list because I think we're gonna touch on that a little bit later on uh, around the future. But you see here, we have our nice file list, all Fluent UI built. Uh, the file list has been one of our most popular capability, and we want to make it even better in the future, and we're going to require feedback by the end of the session. So let me pause for a second. Let me say we're very excited to bring all these capabilities to V3. You can install it right away. Um, you can already play with it, give us the feedback. On, on this capability, we're excited about what's next with uh, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. But wait, there is more. Um, V3 is really our upgrade to Fluent and some of our uh, um, revamp capabilities, but what's next? What happens after V3? Well, let's have a look. What's next? We are working right now with the ACS team, the Azure Communication Services team, to bring a native Microsoft Graph Toolkit component that would be scoped to one-to-one -one or to one-to-many conversations. So you will be able to use a fully working chat component connected to any conversation that you're having in Teams via Graph powered by the ACS UI library. This is very, very, very exciting because it really unlocks amazing scenarios that we have been, like customers have been asking for this for now, for years. Now we believe is the time that the API is shaped in a way that it will empower us to do these things. And what if we could show you that today or at least where we're at with that thing? So 
Gavin, please take over the screen. Absolutely. So what we're going to show today is very, very early. I will say that. Um, I would classify this as pre-alpha software. However, what we have done is we've worked with our friends over in the ACS team, and we've used their chat composite and provided some back-end plumbing to this so that we can actually have an ACS front end powered by chat from Microsoft Graph, aka Teams. So what we can see is on the left, I've got a custom web application. And on the right, I've got Megan who's logged into Teams. I've got my admin account, you know, demoing from the admin account, naughty me. Right. And we can send messages but from Teams and they are showing up in a dedicated web application. What this means is that US developers will be able to integrate Teams powered chat scenarios directly into your applications. And it'll work seamlessly. Yes, there's some formatting issues. Um, our friends in ACS have actually just pushed a build that resolves some of the formatting issues. I didn't want to tempt the demo gods today and uh, pull that update. So that's a little sneak peek at what's coming in terms of chat. I hope you're all excited about the scenarios here. Um, if you could like share some of the scenarios that you're thinking about using this in, in, uh, in the chat, that'd be great. Um, but we've still got more things to show you that's on our roadmap for the future. Absolutely. Um, so we'd love, yeah, as, as Yavin is saying, like we'd love to learn about scenarios where you would be using a component like this in your app. Uh, we have tons of scenarios um, on the back of our mind, but we'd love to get uh, some of them. So either drop them in the chat, come to our repo, aka.ms slash MGT, uh, where you can create a conversation, an issue, whatever, shout out loud uh, what you'd love to see what can be done there uh, would be great. Um, something I just saw Ryan uh, chat, right now we're focusing on private discussions. So one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions or group discussions, our next big jump will be uh, channel conversations for this, but we need to envision it in a way that is a little bit different, but we'd love to, to get scenarios where uh, channel conversation would be useful and how we can make it happen. And how will you make it happen in MGT? Super simple. An MGT conversation, a conversation ID, and voila. The rest is all handled by MGT. All the, the capabilities between Graph and MGT and ACS are all happening there. So really, really, really simple. So really excited about where we're going with all of this. Yeah, Jim, the, the support scenario is definitely one that comes up a lot. If we go beyond what's next with ACS, which will be our next main big release after our V3, we're thinking about a couple of um, improvements or like kind of very welcomed improvements to some of our components, one of them being around our file list experience. And I'd love, um, Gavin, if you could go in and show a little bit what we have in mind and what we're hacking around yeah. to make our file list component better. Yeah, uh, just give me a moment to find the correct browser window. Um, That's okay. Yeah, you know, lots of browser windows at once. It's always the way. Uh, here we go. That one. Share. So, um, in our storybook, um, one of the cool things is that with the way that we work out in the open, Pretty much every one of our PRs, we can deploy to Storybook to view them as we work on them. So we're looking at making what we're calling a file composite, taking the existing file list and composing it up with some other um, components that we're going to work on. Uh, the first of these is a breadcrumb, which will allow us to actually drill into folders within a file list. Just by simply clicking on the folder, I can navigate down or you know, back up. Relatively simple, but the UX here is really important to ensure that we've got things 
working nicely. That breadcrumb component that's sitting at the top here, we're going to ship that as a separate component so that you can use it in your own applications with whatever scenarios you dream up. Um, it's extremely versatile. Uh, the other thing we're building is a uh, little toggle between dark and light mode. Um, our file list component hasn't had the dark mode treatment yet, but we're working on, you know, our cult, our theming options as well. So that's where we're going here. We're going to look at adding things like context menus to file list items and potentially a command bar here as well, so that when you have a selected file, you could, you know, download it directly or share it with someone. Those kind of actions. Those are the things we're looking at with file list. Uh, I think Seb's got a pretty cool demo to show now. And one that is quite a generic scenario, but uh, very compelling. Absolutely. Let me share my screen. So one of the comments we've got a lot in the last couple of uh, months is there is a huge, yeah, people are excited about uh, Microsoft Search and the search endpoints. They want to use it, but now they need to go fully custom, right? We don't support that capability natively in MGT today, especially with MGT GET, which is kind of our Swiss army knife to get access to anything, but the name of the component says it. It's MGT GET. We're not a GET. When we're doing search, we need to do to go via a post. So let me show you where we're at with our search component um, that will provide the same level of capabilities that MGT get, but specifically for search scenarios. So let me go here. Let me kill this one up. Here I have an, a nice search center. So let me reload, make sure everything is logged in. I have a nice bar here, which is my search bar. Some of the ideas we have, you want to make the, the search bar as compelling as the one in M365, meaning that we would support zero keyword query, showing the, the, the latest, the recent capabilities uh, or files or groups or people you have been working with in a really, really sim simple um, approach. But also we want to provide you with not only a search bar, because that would be good, but not great, but also provide you with an interesting search results. Uh, capability or component in, in, in MGT. So now, let's say that I want to search for Contoso. I can actually now see that all of these results are coming from any entities that exist in M365. So we're not talking about just SharePoint files. Here we were scoped to drive items in this scenario, but you can search for messages, conversations. You can search for list items, for connectors, external data straight within this capability. And now you have all the goodness of MGT because now it's all built with MGT, but also the integration. So now, for example, here, I can bring my people card as part of it. So we're really building a rich capability. And what is even better is not only we're building this to allow developers to build their own, but we're also providing default templates. And that's what you see here. This will be our default templates for um, a list of drive items. For example, where you're going to have the thumbnail coming up directly, where you're going to have all the um, capabilities around the summary and all of that, all thanks to M365 and the search capabilities directly on uh, Microsoft Graph. So we're all built with this in mind. So let us let me end that conversation on this. I hope this was useful. Good question. So I see a question around uh, Power Apps and everything. Power Apps is officially not part of M365. Um, so it's not there in, in graph uh, today, but it would be if it was available as part of Microsoft Search or anything that comes up in Search will absolutely be available um, in there. So excited about the future. We need to get your feedback, jump into our repo, say everything you need. Uh, we'd love to hear from your uh, scenarios. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you, Seb. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, really awesome stuff. And, and of course, we'll have more demos on all of that future uh, future stuff in this call later on in the spring, hopefully. Right, Seb? 
Uh, yes, absolutely. We're our V3. So, <laughs> yes. Thank you for putting me on the spot right here. So, our V3, <laughs> exactly. it, oh. our V3, our, the, the, the first real full preview of V3 will be at the end of this month in February. And we're aiming for as or, like early spring for our, our G of V3. Then afterwards, uh, the chat conversation, uh, the conversation component afterwards, and then search and more files uh, in the future. Excellent. Thank you, Seb, for that one. And, and we'll, of course, keep on showing the greatness in the calls and in the demos and all of that. So thank you, Gaming. Thank you, Seb, on that. And thank you, Dan, for the great demos. And just to recap, for next week, uh, we will have a, at least Dan Marlin and Gary Trinder joining us. Um, Dan uh, continues the Azure Communication Services series, as we uh, already discussed earlier today. And Gary is going to talk about the Teams Toolkit learning path and the new demos on that side. Uh, really, really cool material. We might have a third one there as well. We'll see if that's going to happen. But thank you, everybody, for joining today. And the recording will be available in 24 hours within our Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community YouTube channel. Do subscribe on that channel. Makes it easier for you to find whenever there's new material available. We'll also update the Twitter um, and Facebook who can LinkedIn as we roll out new material across the different social medias. But thanks everybody for joining. Uh, please keep on continuing uh, providing us feedback. We do build Microsoft 365 and Power Platform for you. So thank you everybody. Let's stay in touch.